Hi, everybody. We had the microphone turned off. That's why you couldn't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to wait until exactly like, let's see if we can get that off the screen. Now. Okay, there we go. We wanted to wait exactly till 12 o'clock to be able to start. We just wanted to give, and I'm also just a big dork and I say really dumb things. <laughs> Let's mute that. <laughs> anyway, so welcome to webinar number two for Elizabeth Craig Education. Over here, I have Miss Lola Gilbert. She is our operations specialist for Elizabeth Craig Education. Over here, I have Mr. John Craig, who is my husband and also head Sherpa, cinematographer, mm -hmm. photographer, educator, blah, 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 blah. Not the glory <laughs> twice the backpack. Yeah. So um, we, I'm just going to get through some quickie logistics with you right now, and then I'm going to dive right in. So um, thank you for coming, and again, welcome. Yesterday was the introduction to Elizabeth Craig Education, and today is all about marketing. So today's webinar is, I said it's my top five tips for marketing but actually it's gonna be a little bit more of a round table. So we get questions all the time about marketing for photography businesses. And so we've taken like five of those top questions and we are gonna just answer them ourselves. Um, so it's a little bit more of a round table, which is really cool because you get three of us instead of one. Um, so it's more bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions for us pertaining to Elizabeth Craig Education or to marketing, um, you will notice what the chat box is below. Is that right, Lola? I believe it's on the side of us. It's on the side. So um, if you would like to ask us a question, please do. It doesn't have to be about marketing. If you have any other questions as well, we're open to anything. So without further ado, we're going to get started. So our very first question that we, so we, one of our modules is marketing locally. Mm -hmm. um, and we do get questions like, well, don't I want to get like viewed in Paris? Like, wouldn't it be great to get published in like, you know, uh, you know, a, a magazine in Italy? Yeah, it would. I mean, that's like, that's like cream of the crop. No doubt about that. So the question is, why market locally? So I'm going to start with Senor John Craig, and he's going to answer that, and then we'll just kind of run through. Okay, so the reason you want to market locally, and I get to talk to a lot of photographers and either other businesses, local businesses about this, because the bulk of your clientele will be coming from a 25 to 50 mile radius. So we live in a world of social media and a world of big numbers, but big numbers don't mean anything if they can't get to you. So whatever city that you're in, if you only have 100 people on social media or 1,000 people on social media, you want to, you want 90% of that to be in your neighborhood because those are the people that are coming to you. Those are the other people that are going to spread the gospel about you. And so people totally forget about that in today's atmosphere. Everybody wants to be a gazillionaire. They want to be insta-famous and stuff like that. But this is all about building a consistent bank account and about getting consistent clientele coming to your door. So that's why you want to market locally. That's why you want to do small networking groups and why you want to be part of your community. So people will just organically start spreading the gospel about you. And the idea is like, yeah, if we had a million followers in Paris, that would be great. But if we're not selling to people in Paris, that's nothing but just something for me to talk about. Mm -hmm. So that is why you want to market locally because all your clientele is coming most likely within a 25 to 50 mile radius. And also the, when, when it comes to like the, the cream of the crop clientele that you want, these people that are willing to come and travel to you and really invest in the art that you produce, unfortunately is going to be a small percentage of people that either have the money to do so, to pay and to travel to you or have you travel to them, um, or that ultimately just don't want the ease of going down the street to Sue, who's gonna photograph me beautifully as well. Um, so when you are focusing a lot of your energy on the people locally who are going to not have to invest quite as much when it comes to travel and staying and all of those types of things, um, you're going to get a better return on that investment of your time because those people are gonna be more willing to book with you just based off of the financial availability of most of the clients that you're going to have. Mm -hmm. 
does this mean that you should not try to get in a magazine in Italy? No, you should totally go for that. But if you're spending dollars, you want to spend them locally for your local business. Um, we actually didn't advertise. We did not pay for advertising for years. We marketed locally mm -hmm. um, and marketing is different than advertising. So um, go for it. Never ever quit reaching for those high heights, but if you want return on your investment, you want to go local. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And don't stress out about your social media numbers. Mm -hmm. There needs to be like a social media rehab for people. <laughs> yeah. Like every day look at their numbers and like they see a couple go up and a couple go down and they're like, why? But as long as your numbers are local as much as possible, you're mm -hmm. doing great. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you're looking at your stats too. In Instagram, if I look in my statistics, where my audience is coming from, I know that like, what is it, John? It's 90%. like 90% like of my audience is in Pittsburgh, which is where I live and where my business is. Mm -hmm. I know the age range. Um, I know what time of day. So um, I'm marketing locally and it's working. Mm -hmm. Okay, question number two, is blogging obsolete? <laughs> Me and Lola can both share this. And, and Lola said it best. Blogging is your SEO currency. Mm -hmm. If you want findability, if you want searchability, blogging is it. Mm -hmm. And it's the best way to spread your message. And for me, I'll never quit talking about blogging. Mm -hmm. I, our whole life, I started blogging when the word just came out. I blogged for 10 years. The first five years, people were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, we were number one on page one of Google for a decade and a half almost now. And it's all because the more you feed Google, the more Google feeds you. Mm -hmm. And it's that simple. It's, if, especially with photographers. I always say to photographers, you need to, most people hate blogging. And we have just the opposite relationship. But most photographers hate doing it. I'm like, you have to export your photos anyways. Right. Why not share them? I mean, if you had a client pay you, export them anyways and put them on social media mm -hmm. and get that SEO return. And the other thing about blogging, it's the greatest place to do one thing with multiple outcomes. And as you follow this program that, uh, that the three of us developed, it's all about doing one thing with multiple outcomes. So now blogging gives you your SEO, but it gives you this ability to repurpose all this content, all the different social media platforms. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, or maybe even importantly, firstly, your blog becomes an on-demand portfolio. So as, you, as your boudoir or editorial style develops, you'll end up get, getting these little niches. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, someone might say something like, I only want to see couple boudoir. So then you'll be able to go to your search box and type in couple boudoir, and that'll come up. And you'll give an on-demand portfolio. So it's the most efficient way to build your audience, to build your archives, to get SEO, to show the world that you are working. Mm -hmm. I can go on and on and on, but little <laughs> you can, I, half of that I stole from Lola too. So. Um, yeah, I just, like John said, we could talk about blogging um, forever. The thing that I want to add is that, um, because John covered so much of the important stuff here, but um, there are so many different ways to blog now. Mm -hmm. If you are not someone who's passionate about writing, if you hate writing, if you just couldn't care less about the written word, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you are a visual person, and that's how you want to be um, presented to your future clientele, um, that's okay. You can use just photographs as long as you are being smart about your keywords and about your alt text and all of that SEO stuff that we go through inside the course. Um, you don't have to sit down and write a thousand words to put a blog post together. Also, you can use your client words. You can use so many different things to start blogging. Um, and there are a lot of resources out there that tell you um, how to do that as well as inside the course, we do a deep dive into all of that. Um, but there is absolutely, in my mind, no excuse um, that you can use to not blog. So, mm -hmm. um, also, there are even if you are not a writer, like Lola said, it is still your opportunity to put photos out to speak your language mm -hmm. and bring in the clients that you want to bring in. That's your opportunity to show what style of photography you enjoy with boudoir. Some boudoir photographers really push the limits and they really, really, really get very, um, they push the limits. <laughs> other photographers, other boudoir photographers are a little bit more conservative. 
Regardless, other photographers do couples um, mm -hmm. boudoir. Other photographers do same sex. Um, whatever it is, whether you want to write or not, putting out visuals of what it is that you want to attract is a really important thing to do. Also, if you are somewhat of a writer, then it gives you a space to have a voice. Mm -hmm. And this is how you can really accept. When I started um, blogging, um, John had already established it for, I want to say like five years. Um, and once I started blogging, I really started to attract the, the kind of client that I wanted because they understood my what I was saying. It spoke to them. It brought them to me. So now I have a voice. Um, my blog is also used as a resource. People find my, my blog um, not only to research certain types of photo shoots, but also for my words. Um, I'm a big, heavy writer, so it doesn't bother me to blog at all whatsoever. In fact, I really like it. It's kind of a dumping ground. It's almost like a, a, an online journal for me. Mm -hmm. It really works for me. So as Lola said, if you are not blogging, there is no excuse for that because I can't tell you how many photographers I see that will just put up like the woman's first name and then like the date that they photograph them and like maybe one sweet word or, you know, something like um, styled or mm -hmm. special or yeah. anniversary or birthday or whatever. And then they have like five or six photos and that's all you need. That's it. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, if you can do that at least two or three days a week, the Google bots pick it up and they know you're there. Yeah. And then they want to push you to the top because now you're the most relevant because you are the most recent mm -hmm. in your area that has put something out there with those keywords. Yeah. And the last thing I want to say about that, people overthink blogging. Blogging is just a software that you're uploading to. Mm -hmm. This is a software that you work in. It doesn't have to be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden people put like blogging with bloggers, with lifestyle, but it's, you don't need to think about it that much. It's just a platform that you're uploading to. And as you do it, like Elizabeth said, at first it was just a bunch of photos. Then she started developing a writing style and her personal style and attracting people. And that takes days, years. I mean, it's all up to you how you come, but the blog gives you that opportunity mm -hmm. to really even start looking back at your own work and kind of giving you this critique of your own self and your own evolution. Mm -hmm. So blog, 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 blog. Okay, number three, what is a social media schedule? Let's start with Lola. <laughs> Something we do poorly. Um, well, it's. I think it's. It's. And what is the importance of it? Yeah. Yeah. Self-explanatory on a basic level, right? You are scheduling your social media, right. but really, what it is is a tool to make sure that you're being consistent, to make sure that your brand is being portrayed in the way that you want it to, to make sure that you are continuously building SEO, um, to make sure that the people that follow you know exactly what to expect. And I know that sounds like a lot that you're doing with a social media schedule, but it is really exactly what you are doing. Um, you are continuing to be consistent and continuing to show up. And you are also <laughs> ridding, how many of you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, what am I gonna post today? Or you're in the middle of dinner and you're like, shit, I didn't post on social media today. And then you're scrambling for something and it's not well thought out and you don't know if you're connecting to your potential clients or your followers because you just threw it up there. You are alleviating all of that pressure, all of that confusion and the space in your brain by having a social media schedule and it ultimately builds into your marketing plan as a whole um because you don't want to be last minute trying to connect with your followers yeah so mild interruption there our dog was outside and she's a bit of a princess and so she was barking her head off until Somebody went out and saved her. So now <laughs> her favorite place to sit is on my lap. So we're stuck with her until she gets bored. But she is cute. Yeah. Um, your social media schedule is um, something that's going to save you. If you can get a, a schedule together and you can plan out drafts and things like that, it's going to save you so much headache and so much time, just mm -hmm. like Lola was saying. Um, it also makes everything for you consistent and that i'm telling you right now consistency beats quality any day of the week mm -hmm. so if you're like oh my photos just aren't good like that put it out there consistency beats quality any day of the week yeah let me let me jump in there. Go ahead. 
because quality is subjective. Mm -hmm. yeah. Consistency is not. So in your own personal world, I'm sure there's a lot of great music and a lot of books that you just may not dig. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that they're, you know, Russian literature is never going away. Like I'm mm -hmm. not into Russian literature, but it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so quality is subjective. Remember that consistency is not showing up daily mm -hmm. is more important. Your work will get your work. Your consistency will attract the clientele. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I just want to jump in on that. That's a big And inside why. of the course, we talk a lot about what you should be posting, what you should be saying, mm -hmm. how often you should be posting, how to put together that social media schedule so that you and are also scrambling. per platform. Right, mm -hmm. per platform, yeah. Um, so if that is something that you are really struggling with, then inside the course you're gonna learn a lot more about that. But on a basic level, you need to have a schedule and to stick with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is one thing I can do to increase awareness about my business? Take blog. it. Blog, <laughs> blog, 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 mm -hmm. consistency. People who create consistently and upload consistency work consistently. Mm -hmm. Like we have a little tagline, um, create, connect, and grow. And that has been like one of the pillars of our business. Like mm -hmm. we create, we connect, you know, you connect it through social, you connect it through individuals, you connect it through communities and network, and your business will grow. And it's the idea that there's, you need to start and like, in the perfect environment, like for you specifically out there, there's just enough time to be successful if you start today. Right. And remember that there's just enough time in your life to be successful if you start today. And that's the goal that we're trying to get people to do, to live the life that they want to live. Mm -hmm. Create, connect, and grow. Yeah. Put on a t-shirt. Um, and I would also say um, stop hiding behind your brand. People <laughs> buy from people, not businesses. Unless we're talking about large corporations like Target and Walmart, of course, people buy from the – I don't know who the owner of those companies oh. are. But when we're talking about businesses, um, self-made businesses, local businesses, those types of things, oh. especially artists, people are connected to you, and then they are connected to the art that you create. Mm -hmm. So if you're not on oh. Instagram, stories if you're not doing that doesn't have to be webinars but if you're not doing behind the scene videos if you are not connecting in some way to your audience talking about why you do what you do why you love it you know what keeps you motivated to keep creating your art people are going to connect to sally down the street and they're going to pay her because they are especially when it comes to boudoir they are going to feel safe and they're going to feel like they can connect to her and be vulnerable um so stop the hiding behind your brand just because you're nervous to get on camera just because you hate being on camera whatever it is um you have to take risks in order to be successful. And if that's your risk, then you need mm -hmm. to start doing it. I just had this conversation yesterday <clears throat> about marketing with a different industry. Mm -hmm. And I was using the, and people were really um, uncomfortable doing social media and yeah. showing content. And I was giving them the example, like, remember when you walk into the grocery store and you can see the butcher working, or when you walk into the grocery store and you can mm -hmm. see the baker working, you walk into the drugstore, you can see the pharmacist working. Mm -hmm. That's content. You know, the reason they have those people where you can visually see them is so you can actually see them working. Mm -hmm. And if people cannot see you working, they're going to assume you're not working. So just the same idea, like when you walk up to whatever counter and there's nobody there, you assume they're not working. So if you're not showing people that, that you're working and you're like, why is my email box empty? Because nobody knows that you're working. Yeah, you and nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares. And the other thing I wanted to, one other thing I was going to say too, um, that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> if, um, one tip that I have for you as well is, oh, look, our tone changed. Look at that. Um, it's called white balance, people. Yeah, <laughs> bad white balance. White balance. Mm -hmm. Why you should have control over your cameras. <laughs> trying to change that. Anyway, um, the other thing that you can do is collaborate with locals. When you collaborate with locals, you are now, like, let's say that you are doing an inspiration shoot and you have um, an event planner, you have a florist, you have um, a hair and makeup stylist, um, and maybe you are working with like a furniture rental company. That is four touches right there, five, including yourself, that is going 
to spread everything that comes from that shoot mm -hmm. and not including the model, the muse, or the person that you're actually photographing. So now you're up to six. Right. So when you collaborate, it, whatever, I mean, it's like, you know, now you have six people, even if you have like four people, you know, it's, it's more touches from one thing. Right. So um, collaborating with local vendors is a really great idea as well. Um, also collaborating with vendors, specifically pick those vendors that have a really big social media following. And going back to our first question, all of those people have local reach. Mm -hmm. So if you get um, featured on an Instagram page that has 60,000 followers, that's awesome. You're going to get a lot of likes. You might get some followers. Cool. How many of those people are going to come purchase your photography session? I, I would be that. willing to, I would be willing to say close to zero, if not mm -hmm. maybe one or two. I've never gotten anything from it. Yeah. <laughs> Off of big features. Yeah. Off of big, big features. Yes. Yeah. Because it just doesn't, yes, it feels nice. It's great to have accolades, but it doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't want you to care as much about getting featured in that way mm -hmm. um, because it oftentimes does not boost your bottom line. Yeah. Um, so just rounding back to what Elizabeth was saying, those six people are going to have a local reach where their aunt, their best friend from high school, there's somebody is going to say, the I want to look like that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. want to look like that in the photo shoot that Elizabeth did. So I'm going to reach out to her. Yeah. Um, and like I said, Sally from California, probably not going to happen. Probably not. Could, okay. could. reach for the stars. Yeah. But. I've had people travel from Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> um, all, all kinds of different places there all over the United States. Um, one woman was just coming in from Germany, mm -hmm. but it's yeah, right. a couple times a year. Yeah. yeah. A couple times a year. Okay. It does happen. Um, okay. <clears throat> Why is having a brand, so important. I bet all three of us can give three different answers to that question yeah. and all three of us will be correct. Uh, Let me give my answer first. So go ahead. A brand is what you want people to say about you once you leave the room. Mm -hmm. That's the, For me, that's the simplest way that I think about it. What do I want people to say about me when I leave the room? Mm -hmm. You know, and, all, and that changes over the years. But for me right now, I want people to say like, I'm a content creator. He's a creative. You know, but everybody has a different answer for that. So let's go down the line and see. Um, for me, branding is your voice and your style. Mm -hmm. um, it's what separates you from absolutely everybody that is doing the exact same thing as you. Mm -hmm. When I first started in boudoir photography in Pittsburgh, nobody else was doing it. I was given, holy cow, was I given the gift of being, I get. I was given four years to figure out my brand um, before it started, that uh, trend started hitting Pittsburgh. Um, I, my brand for boudoir photography has always, always, always been luxury. That's my brand. Mm -hmm. Women come to me. They, um, they often, they come to me obviously for gifts for their significant others, but they mostly come to me because they want an experience, a luxury experience that is going to make them feel so good mm -hmm. about themselves when they walk out the door. There are a ton of boudoir photographers, really good boudoir photographers in Pittsburgh that you can go to that are much, much less expensive. Go in, get photographed, get out, and end up with like some really great photos. So um, that's their brand. That's their brand. You come in and see, you know, th their motto is you come see me, it's gonna be quick, it's gonna be painless, and you're gonna get good photos and you're not gonna break the bank. With me, it's going to be, you're gonna come in and you're not gonna be sure if you can do this, and I'm gonna show you that you can. Yeah. And you're going to walk in at this time, you're going to walk in all timid and you're going to walk in a little shy, but you are going to run that. You are going to walk the catwalk and the runway on the way out. So that's, that's my brand. Go ahead. Lilith. Um, so for me, branding is important because it in terms fun, in turn funnels back into consistency, which in turn funnels back to people saying the same thing when you leave the room and for people knowing the experience that they're going to get mm -hmm. when they walk in the door with you and knowing why it's worth it. Mm -hmm. So continually Elizabeth is talking about the experience that she offers. It is not at the end of the day about the pictures, mm -hmm. even though that is an incredible piece, but it's about 
everything else that they get with the experience with Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, and so, and people know that because she is consistently talking about it. They know what their, her studio is going to look and feel like when they walk in, because she is showing behind the scenes, she's showing pictures of it. You know, it is constantly showcased in her, you know, online portfolio, wherever that might be. So to me, a brand is about consistency and it is about people knowing you before they even walk in the door and feeling like they can trust you with, a thousand two thousand ten thousand dollars because they know that they're getting exactly what they want from you I will have um, people that I've never met before come up to me and say like oh my gosh you're Elizabeth Craig and they'll talk to me like they know me because mm -hmm. they, they know me mm -hmm. they kind of yeah. do because they've read my blog they've gotten to know me I um, I take a lot of time and I put a lot of energy into um, making sure that my brand is very clear and very transparent and very ever present. Mm -hmm. And when I walk into a room, people walk up to me and they say, Hey, are you listening to Craig's husband? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and it's kind of funny, but we branded ourselves completely differently. Yes. Like I branded myself behind the scenes yeah. and Sherpa and content creator yes. and all that stuff. And we branded her publicly. And so especially if you're year like one to three with your photography business or like even zero one to three your branding will develop and it kind of circles back to our first question if you're not sure what you want your brand to be like right now you know like i want my font to be this i want my colors to be this but i don't know what my I want my brand to be if you blog you will be able to look back at your work mm -hmm. and your brand will start speaking to you so even if you're not sure if you start putting your work out there and you start getting feedback your brand will evolve from that. And this is something that I walk you through in the um, a couple of the modules as well. Um, one very, very specifically is everything about my brand and how I came up with that brand and how my brand, I go step by step on how I work with my clients from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And that explains my entire brand, mm -hmm. which is going to help you hopefully figure out your own brand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And in one of the bonus modules, I also talk about how to discover who your ideal client is. So you can mm -hmm. continue to talk to them through every part of your marketing. Um, and that's going to roll into what your brand is and who you want to embrace and who you want to serve and how you can best serve them. Because something I hear all the time is I want to know who my ideal client is. I want the perfect bride. I want the perfect, you know, boudoir client is, but what I don't hear enough of is how are you going to serve them not how they can serve you because ultimately we are a service-based industry and product based too depending mm -hmm. on what you're offering um but i don't hear enough business owners saying how can i best embrace them through this experience not oh i want the perfect client you want both equally and not just the perfect client when you aren't serving them because ultimately that's what you want yes all right that's okay. awesome Yes. Um, the last like little tip that I have for you guys too is um, my little like extra six kind of tip is get reviews. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing too. Um, like Lola was saying back in the blogging thing, like you can put up your clients words. You don't have to put up your own words, but if you want to give yourself some social media currency, get yourself some reviews. Mm -hmm. That's one of the best things that you can do as well. It's how to build trust within future clients. If yeah. they're saying, wow, these, 15 women have all had incredible experience. Look at their photos. Look what they gained from it. Yeah. I was just about to hit that checkout button, but I'm just not sure. Let me see what other people are saying. If you don't put those reviews out there, or at least if you don't direct people to a place to put those reviews, mm -hmm. people just aren't going to do it. They've gotten what they need. They've gotten an incredible experience. They don't necessarily need to you know, yeah. write it online. They'll tell their friends and that's awesome too. But if you want them to have on your website or on Google or wherever, you need to be asking for them. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many jobs, how many sessions I booked just off of my reviews. Mm -hmm. People have contacted me and said, I was doing research and I found like all of these boudoir photographers, you have the best reviews, I love mm -hmm. your work, I'm not even looking any further. Yeah. Right. And reviews so. snowball. The mm -hmm. first one to three to five may be awkward for you to ask, but once you get some reviews out there, people will read those reviews, the next client reviews. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a much easier thing. So once you get the process going, it just keeps going and then it becomes fluid. Yeah. And inside the modules, lastly, we talk about mm -hmm. how to continue to make that part of your client experience, mm -hmm. how to automate that. So you're not really asking for it. Your automated process is asking for it um, and how to do it in a way that isn't awkward and is super easy for your client. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
So that is all we have for this webinar. Um, if you have any questions, now's the time to type them up. If you um, think of questions later, um, you can put them can, in the comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can put them in the comments down below. You can still mm -hmm. put them in the comments down below and we'll make sure to check those. Um, if you have a private question that you prefer not to put in the comment section, you can also email us at hello at elizabethcraigeducation.com. Uh, don't forget that the, we have another webinar uh, coming up tomorrow and I'm going to be going over my five top um, in-person sales tips. Um, it's going to be good. going to be good. <laughs> Make sure you go to elizabethcraigeducation.com and sign up for the newsletter because we have lots of goodies and lots of information to be able to um, pass out to everybody. Uh, what else am I forgetting? If you decide that you would like to go ahead and sign up for the 10-week course, you can also find that um, at elizabethcraigeducation.com as well. Mm -hmm. That is $7.99 if you pay in full. Um, if you decide that you would like to do uh, payments, you can do that as well. If you do pay in full, you get a $200 discount. Mm -hmm. That first class starts on October 29th. It will change your life. No joke. <laughs> it, it will change our you. life. Yeah. Our and, if, and if, speaking of reviews, if you want to know what other people are saying, we have tons of reviews on there from past um, students who have taken the course. Mm -hmm. So if you want to hear how it's benefited them, that is on the page as well. Yes. Um, if you, if you're on the fence, um, I recommend that you do join us now. Next week, we also have three webinars as well. Um, Monday is, Lola, do you remember? Um, Monday is um, building confidence in your client so that they can get more vulnerable vulnerable with you and drop mm -hmm. their walls. Um, I go over all my tips and tricks with that. Uh, to, uh, excuse me, Wednesday is a live shoot in my studio. Um, we'll be covering all of that. I'll be teaching during it, you know, giving you tips and tricks and why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'll um, be sure. He'll be the Sherpa-ing. Um, you can also ask any questions that you want. And then Thursday is, I don't know, I can't get um, straight. Thursday is Know Your Worth. Know your worth, and that's more of an inspirational than it is like about putting numbers together. Mm -hmm. um, so I go over that and I go over like no excuses. Um, so if you're on the fence, I highly recommend that you sign up for the rest of these webinars and you join us. Just a little reminder, if you are thinking, I think I want to sign up for the course, you do need to sign up and either start your payments or pay in full by October 28th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. The very first class starts October 29th. Um, and what happens is you will get the first module and then every week thereafter, you will get the next module until we get through um, the 10 weeks. Um, two weeks, we do give you a little bit of a break because you're gonna need it. There's so <laughs> much information. So much information. So much information. Um, if you miss that deadline of October 28th uh, by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, then you gotta wait three months because this first, uh, the first sort of launch of the very first 10 week program, we are going to be coddling and nurturing and we're going to be babying and we're giving <laughs> ourselves 100% to the students that are signing up for that. Um, in the future, we will probably, you know, give it like two weeks and then maybe launch a new one and then give it two weeks. But for now, um, we are giving 100% of our attention to the people that sign up for the very first time. Um, so therefore, we're going to see them through all 10 weeks and then we will launch the next one. So if you don't sign up by that time, then you do have to wait three months. So just consider that. Um, if you have any questions, again, please don't hesitate to ask. And I hope to see you all here tomorrow. Bye, everybody. It's lunchtime, y'all. Go create something. Go create share something. Share it. And share it.